Road. Yep. Michael Risch here with uh, GlobalPunkReview.com, and we're here with Todd Evans from Mobile Death Camp. You've been out on tour uh, a little over a year now. How's it going? Uh, yeah, close. Yeah, it's going real good, man. You know, it's like a fucking roller coaster. Up and ups and downs. The ups beat the downs. The downs are cool. We're not down and out. I don't know. How much longer on the road? Uh, we're out till we're home for Christmas, and then we leave again. I mean, for Christmas, like a week between Christmas, a week like a little. Here's my little graph. A little couple days before Christmas, going into the Christmas season. To New Year's Day, and then we leave New Year's Day again for like two months, maybe three months. And where's home again? Toledo, Ohio. That's right, Toledo. <laughs> Actually, I live in Temperance, Michigan, which is like three miles north of Toledo, just inside the good state. Right there. Can you see that? <laughs> it looks like a I got the. <laughs> now you you've been filling up the the tour schedule five or six days a week, basically, right? Yeah, we we like to play every night, man. Every day. Now, are you guys finding time to do any writing now? Uh, some, kinda. I mean, I guess, it's, I guess, well, I guess it's not completely my job to write the lyrics, but I like to be the one that does it because since I'm the one that's saying it, I've always been, you know, like in other bands when I wasn't the one, when I, when I didn't sing, I was always like the guy that sings should, you know, be c committed to what he's singing, you know, should really feel it. So he could probably sing that shit himself or write it himself. But right. I've written yeah, some things. I mean, we've got like probably five songs ready to go for some new shit. Where do you guys end up doing most I of the cuss. Yeah. yeah Local okay. ones. Mm -hmm. By all means. Cuss all you want. <laughs> Man, I saw Star Wars in concert a couple nights ago in Toledo. The Luke Scotty Arena. Yeah. Fucking amazing, man. Amazing. The people there all dressed up. Some were. There were really <laughs> many lightsabers they were selling, man. Any of you get a chance to check it out, go see it. It's fucking amazing. Of course, I got a free ticket. So yeah. That Sweet. made it a little easier, but... Sweet. Still, Did you buy a lightsaber? So for joke. I had one. We'll talk about it. <laughs> I buy one. I got a real one. <laughs> now, with, with uh, Black Swamp Rising being over... You're not going to ask me what color I'll, my power bar is? No, 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 no. Okay. All right. <laughs> We're off Star Wars, sorry. <laughs> With the CD being out a, a little over a year now, yeah. uh, what are the plans for any new material? Um, I mean, we're, we're talking to a few indies right now, and um, in, by indies I mean indie labels. For all you out there give a shit. And uh, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to try to get that CD. There was only a thousand copies of that that went out, so it's not really known anywhere, you know, basically. And uh, so with the right push and a different label, they want to pick it up, just mass produce it, throw it out there so that there's something out there on a national scale, international scale. And then uh, with the new stuff, I mean, we're just going to have to find time to record. We are going into the studio December 21st to do a 55 second clip, like an intro clip for uh, we met this a good friend of mine from the UP in Michigan has a friend from Florida who's a swamp master. And he wrestles fucking alligators. And he said he'd show us how to do it correctly. And he's got this show going on. It's how to become or becoming the next Swamp Master. And, he, and the dude's a metalhead. He came out to our show in Orlando and fucking digs us, digs our tunes, and wanted us to do the like the theme song for it. Sweet. So we have like a 55-second theme song ready to go. We're going to bust it out at uh, Zeta down in Toledo and then give it to him and fucking down. So yeah. and it's supposed to come out on Spike, okay. Spike TV. So okay. we'll see. That'd be really Vegas cool. shows and like playing live with him and then doing his thing and uh, sweet. That's and different. Wear too. some kind of like heavy gloves because I'm gonna wrestle the fucking alligator, man. But I'm gonna need these fingers. <laughs> <laughs> and Bo's excited about wrestling gators too. Cracker, not so much. <laughs> Drummers. <laughs> we were holding the alligators in the Everglades about two weeks ago. My first thought was, Cracker goes, go ahead and pick him up. Get a good picture. I said, I ain't touching that fucking thing. <laughs> he's only about, he's only about, can you see this? About that long, two and a half, three feet long. The guy, the guy picks him up, dries him off. He's like, she won't bite you. I'm like, <laughs> fuck you know, man. He dries him off. I just grab him around the neck, behind the tail, behind the butt. I'm like, so cool. Wow. Oh. Uh, I couldn't handle that. Now you did. You did have a ma major label. Yeah. And then it went wrong. Well, what yeah. Uh, the guy promises the world. You know, same old story. Nobody banned.
guy looks at it, guy loves you, guy promises the world, picks you up, grabs your record, says he does this, says he does that, and didn't do anything with it. I actually called the guy one night and tried to get him, tried to get 500 bucks out of a major label guy. Major label. Try to get 500 bucks to get out of some Soulfly dates. Uh-huh. Like two, three weeks of Soulfly. Fucking blew up, man. Was drunk. Was like, you know, rah, rah, rah. I could tell he was drunk around hills and bolts. And, uh, oh, fuck you, man. Fuck you. Blah, 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 blah. Tell me about the business. Now, I don't know everything about the business, but I've been in said business for about 25 years. So I know a couple of things, you know. And I'm, and maybe I can guess the rest, but, uh, it just didn't work out. He ended up giving us a record back. And, uh, Nothing happened. Well, with the state of uh, the music business today, it's not all that. I mean, are you feeling the effects? You're, you're independent. Yeah, you have total control over everyone. Yeah, I mean, you know, yes and no. Because, I mean, we, you know, we still play the door somewhere, as many as that is. And, uh, some, you know, like I said, you know, some, it's just seemed, luckily, even with the economy the way it is, people want to get out and get their fucking yeah yeah's out. Right. So if they know the cool show, they'll go to see it. But you know, that's another problem is a lot of promoters these days. They just put your shows on, you know, they put a little picture online say, this man's playing here on this day. Well, nobody fucking knows, you know. Yeah, you gotta do a lot. You having to look up, oh shit, you know, what happened to going out and putting out flyers, maybe doing a radio ad, heaven forbid, you know, the more people you get into a show, the more money you make on the show too, and the promoter. Uh, mobile, mobile Dev Camp is, you know, your old school metal band. I mean, you guys sound, you remind me of Exodus, a lot of the old school stuff, but there seems to be a lot of crossover appeal. I mean, it's, I, I've been to your shows where I, I'm seeing punks in the front row, uh, I'm, I'm seeing, you know, the guys that would go to Aerosmith, I'm seeing a lot of, yeah, no, <laughs> there's a lot of crossover. He's the guy that would go to Aerosmith. No. Global punk no, no, no. scene. <laughs> what What do you think accounts for the broad appeal? Um, I mean, we do have a lot of broad appeal. I think you know what I'm talking about. The uh, as far as like the punks, I mean, we're we're really aggressive. Some of the shit is even vicious and it's really fast. I mean, that's punk, you know, a lot of punks like that. And I mean, there was uh, back in, I guess, back in the day, if I might be so bold, back in my day, back in that day, from my age, saying back in the day, was before the punks and the metalheads came together to go to shows. Right. So when we would go to, like, check out a club, we'd go up to Detroit, up to here, we're in Detroit, Greystone, remember that place? Oh, yeah. And we talked to Kerry. And uh, scary. He was like, "Come on in, get you guys a show." And he's fucking shaved head, a pistol on the side. Support carries freedom. Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely, definitely. And uh, uh.